Hey guys, Mr. Bloom here. Let's talk acceleration. So to understand acceleration, we have to first make sure we have a solid understanding of speed and more importantly, velocity. Because direction is important, we identify velocity with a mathematical quantity called a vector. A vector is simply an arrow that shows which way the object is traveling. So for example, this object is traveling at a speed of 25 miles an hour. This object is also traveling at a speed of 25 miles an hour. So does that mean that their velocities are also the same? And the answer is no. Although they do have the same speed, they have different velocities. Why do they have different velocities? Because this object is moving to the right and this object is moving to the left. So because they have different directions, they also must have different velocities because velocity cares about direction. It is a vector quantity. Acceleration is also, like velocity, a vector quantity. It has a scale, a number with units, which we'll talk about later, but it also has a direction. So what does direction for acceleration mean? The direction of acceleration is not necessarily the same as the direction of motion. Remember, velocity is defined as the rate at which your position is changing. So the direction of that truly tells you the direction that your position is changing. Are you moving forward or moving backwards? Remember the definition of acceleration is it's a measure of the change in an object's velocity. Acceleration measures change. So what is the direction? It's the direction of the change. So what does that mean? Let's take a look at this example. I've got a car that's traveling with a velocity of 25 miles an hour to the right. Again, a speed and a direction. And it, let's say it's also experiencing an acceleration that is acting to the right. What does that mean? Well, in general, if the vector of acceleration is in the same direction as the vector of motion, then that means that the object is speeding up. Its objects, or the object speed is increasing. Why? Because acceleration is caused by a net force. Remember, that's what Newton's first law says. It says objects move in a straight line at a constant speed unless acted upon by a net force, an unbalanced force. So whatever direction that net force is acting is going to result in an acceleration, a change in velocity, that is also in that direction. So the direction of acceleration doesn't represent the direction that the object is moving. It represents the direction of the net force that's acting on the object while it's moving. Here's an example of that same car moving to the right at 25 miles an hour, but its acceleration is now pointed to the left. So in this case, the car is moving to the right, but there is a net force acting against its motion to the left. Well, what would that do to the car? Well, of course, the answer is it would slow the car down. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So if the acceleration is acting opposite the direction of motion, which means that there is a net force acting against its motion, the result of that is to decrease the object speed. In other words, it slows down. So let's apply this. So here's our familiar example of a car at a stop sign that then speeds up to 25 miles an hour, moves at a constant velocity of 25 miles an hour for some time, then slows down from 25 miles an hour back to rest. So let's take a look at velocity and acceleration vectors. So what direction is the velocity in this case, this case, and this case? And the answer, of course, is that in each case, the object is moving to the right. And the direction of velocity always points in the direction that the object is, in fact, moving through space. It's moving to the right. All right, now what about acceleration? Well, let's start with this case. The car is speeding up. Therefore, the acceleration is in the same direction as the velocity. So the acceleration is also to the right, causing it to speed up, okay? All right, well, what about this case? In this case, the object is still moving to the right, but now it is slowing down. Why would it be slowing down? Because there is a net force acting on it against its motion, which results in an acceleration that is in the opposite direction of its motion. And so that acceleration that is opposite the direction of its motion is gonna act against its motion and cause it to slow down. So again, speeding up, 
acceleration and velocity are in the same direction. Slowing down, acceleration and velocity are in opposite directions. In both these cases, the velocity is to the right. In one case, the acceleration is also to the right, causing it to speed up. In the other case, the acceleration is to the left against its motion to the right, causing it to slow down. Let's imagine that you toss a ball straight up into the air. So which way is the velocity vector of the ball pointing at each point? And which way is the acceleration vector of the ball at each point? Well, we know that when you toss it upwards, it is moving upwards until it gets to the top and that's when it turns around. So if it's moving upwards during the first half of its flight, then indeed the velocity vector is upwards. Similarly, once it turns around and starts falling back down, it's now moving downwards. So what direction is the velocity vector? It's downwards. Remember, the direction of the velocity vector is the direction of its motion. Now, how about acceleration? Well, to figure out acceleration, we have to ask, how is its velocity changing? On the way up, the ball is slowing down. So remember, when something is slowing down, that means that there is a net force acting against its motion and therefore the acceleration is acting against its motion. So if it is moving upward, then the acceleration must be acting opposite to that to cause it to slow down. Therefore, the acceleration vector is downwards, opposite the direction of motion. That's why it's slowing down. Now, how about on the other side of its fall? Well, now it's moving downward, and as we all know, when an object falls, it speeds up as it falls. So if it's moving downward and it's also speeding up, that means whatever net force is acting on it that's causing it to speed up is acting in the same direction as its motion. So if it's moving down, then the acceleration, which is caused by that net force, must also be downward. Now, one question that we could ask is what's going on at the top of its motion? Well, when it reaches the top, it momentarily comes to rest. And you might say, well, in that case, it's not moving at all. So does that mean the acceleration disappears? Well, certainly the velocity drops to zero. And if the velocity drops to the zero, then the length of the velocity vector, the arrow, is also zero. So it has no direction. So I can't draw a velocity vector for this point. But can I draw an acceleration vector? Well, let's think about what's happening. As it moves towards this point, it's slowing down. As it moves away from this point, it's speeding up. As it's slowing down, it's still moving upwards, so that's a downward acceleration. As it is speeding up, it's starting to move downwards. That's also a downward acceleration. But the other important thing is at this point, the ball is doing something else. It's changing its direction. It was going up, now it's going down. What causes an, causes an object to change direction? A net force. And guess what direction that net force is acting? the same direction it was acting the whole time, downward. So at the top, even though its velocity is zero at that moment, the acceleration is still acting downward. Why is it acting downward the entire time, on the way up, at the top, and on the way down? Well, what's causing that downward acceleration? The answer, of course, is gravity. And gravity is a force that always acts downward. So that means that the acceleration due to gravity will always act downward. On the way up, it's acting downward, causing the ball to slow down. At the top, it's acting downward, causing the ball to reverse direction. And on the way down, the, it is acting downward, causing the object to speed up. So the acceleration of gravity is always acting down against the velocity on the way up with the velocity on the way down, okay? So if you understand that, then you probably have a pretty good understanding of the direction of velocity versus the direction of acceleration.